Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Today we have Yancy Johnson uh, speaking about modern traffic control connectivity solutions. Uh, we'll give everybody a few more minutes just to make sure uh, everyone can join on time, and we will get started shortly. Yancy, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so we're not supposed to see a white screen. Is that what we're supposed to see right now? Yep, there we go. Can you see, you can yep. see the whole thing. You don't see the dashboard. Um, yes, yeah, yeah, I just moved it off to the, to the, uh, to the right. I'll open it back up. Okay. Okay, I've seen a few other people join. Yes, are you ready to begin? I am. Okay, hello everybody again. Uh, today we have VNC Johnson, Regional Sales Manager of the Southeast, uh, speaking to us about modern traffic control connectivity solutions. Great, thank you, Susan. <clears throat> good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for those that are that are on the call. Thank you, thank you for joining and taking the time for us to uh, allow us to present to you uh, just some of the. Uh, one of these, um, uh, excuse me, but just the uh, presentation on digital transformation of roadways. So next, next slide there. We'll we'll kind of talk about how this is coming from, or how these the the states are now managing the roadways, going from basically serial or you know kilobits of data now to broadband types of data, uh, and and finding other avenues of of revenue. Um, uh, with with that network. So if you look at uh, kind of the smart highways and deliver that quality of life and outcomes, right? So connected experience. So now they're looking at a, a, a really a pervasive Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi along the highways for a va a fast va a vehicle roaming support, hot spots uh, at rest stops or refueling uh, areas, even businesses along the highway. We've done some projects with a couple of truck stops that are tapping into that network that's coming off of the interstate. And then, then using that internet that's available for them, and then providing Wi-Fi at their truck stops, right? Not depending on lease lines or or cell cards to to provide that in some more remote areas. 
Uh, also, uh, connecting, you know, sort more city services, cashless payments is like on toll roads, uh, things like that. Maybe if it's a traffic ticket, you can pay right there on the spot, whatever. So uh, even parking meters. So again, it's, it pretty improves that on the road experience with automated toll payments, cashless services at roadside businesses, digital signage, right, for allow road conditions, delays, maybe alternate routes. What that does, it really takes that frustration of, uh, you know, the traffic these days in, in most major cities uh, and, and, and gives that driver or those passengers a, a better experience, right? So as they travel through the through those areas, um, you know, traffic wasn't that bad. We were able to move, they moved us around and we were able to get to where we needed to go and, and um, you know, kind of continued their journey. And also traffic management and, and emergency communication. So another one is, it's really this just emergency disaster communication. So wireless access to the backhaul for, for backup emergency communication mechanisms. If the wired network or the cellular networks fall in disaster situations, so rapidly deployable devices uh, in types of emergency, so such as you know the, the hurricanes that have rolled through the, the southeast. Um, I know for a fact that we have many uh, of the uh, two-way radio networks that we, we manage or actually provide the net, uh, equipment for. Uh, they were able to tap off of those towers when some of those uh, radio connect communications went down. They put up a rapid deployable uh, cows in those area, right? Cellular kind of cellular on wheels, but they also provide radio communication and connected into those networks. And then were able to provide that uh, communication back to those emergency responders, you know, in those areas. Uh, again, just kind of gives that nice, um, not really has a lot to deal with the traffic, but it becomes part of that smart city. And this is just one facet of becoming a smart city uh, is also that smart traffic uh, as well. And also traffic management. So road sensors, video surveillance of, along the, the uh, along the roadway to monitor traffic flows. Again, to know, you know, what roads are used the most, you know, how do we need to manage as far as maintenance of those roads? You know, how long does that asphalt or that concrete last and manage that? Uh, to know what type of maintenance costs and build that into the budget uh, as they go along. Also, the analytics as far as uh, you know, optimizing traffic patterns and, man and man again managing those road conditions. Uh, and then for public safety, again, it's accident prevention, right? Trying to make that safe. Uh, early warnings on road hazards such as you know flooding, potholes, road crossings. Again, uh, digital signage where they have got the uh, contextual warnings like driving above speed limit, road work. Uh, cautionary warnings, right? Poor visibility, slow traffic, stalled vehicles. Again, I know we have the apps on our phone, whether that's uh, Google Maps or Waze or whatever you may use, but it's also nice to have that where you know that the, the DOT that is monitoring the roadways also has that information and they have more real-time information. So again, for them, it becomes more of a, uh, a proactive rather than being reactive. And that's what you wanted to give that better experience as you drive through that that town or that uh, that state. Um, also, kind of reduce highway crime, right? Enhance national security. So, video surveillance along the highways, rest stops. Uh, you also can track license plates if you see suspicious activity. So, when Amber Alerts come up, if you have those uh, video surveillance along the um, along the interstate there along the roadways. You can then track those vehicles if something happens and you can then track that. Uh, and, and there's video cameras really in a lot of places that you don't even really suspect or even notice uh, that they're tracking those movements. And it's not it's not to say they're tracking where everybody goes. It's in case there is an issue or there's an accident, they can then pull, go back and look at that information and they can uh, then then look to find some of the evidence there. So uh, also track suspicious vehicles. Uh, highway entry and exit points to see where there may be some congestion or whatnot. So again, it tries to give that overall uh, great experience as you travel um, through a particular town or, or city. And then also uh, there's revenue opportunities for the states, right? So you have Wi-Fi access for businesses or even for the travelers. Uh, also, you can do some connected service, city services in there as well, whether that's for, um, you know, like the, uh, the state of South Carolina, uh, one company actually manages the whole wireless network for their land mobile radio connectivity for all their emergency response vehicles. But they're now building out spurs off of that then to each town to then provide more data for them to have more connected services 
along their roadways within the city, uh, whether that to be for uh, you know trash pickup, they know where that is, what time it may come through, uh, you know some of their more uh, maintenance vehicles that they have trying through there can then tap into that network pull down work orders. Again, it's just to help that traffic flow. Value. They know where, you know, there may be a road closure and they're getting ready to uh, finish that, that uh, the work there. They can then move and open that road closure and then open that traffic for, for, uh, for the flow. So uh, again, they can use that for added revenue for those, for those cities and towns that may use that. And also add revenue on, on smart digital dot, uh, billboards, right? Again, to kind of help pay for, uh, the road work that needs to be done or the maintenance that, that, that occurs on these roads, the uh, the states can then pull revenue from that and be able to uh, kind of help pay for, pay for that because we all know that uh, uh, road work is always continuous, right, no matter where we go. Uh, next slide. So typical smart highway applications, right? So, and, and these are those that are really, um, Things that that need to be monitored uh, really on real time uh, to make sure that um, it, you know that the connection is always there. But that'd be critical infrastructure monitoring, control. You know, really intelligent traffic systems, digital signage, stormwater uh, management like flood control to make sure there's no roadways that are that uh, could be uh, flooded uh, during certain times. Street light controls to make sure that you know that. The roadways, you know, you can see as you drive down, right? Some areas may be too dark or whatever, and you, you, you need to have that lighting out there. Uh, tank level monitoring, video surveillance, school crossing signals. Again, making all of these roads more automated uh, and safer for, for, for the public. And that's always key, again. And then you've got um, automatic metering infrastructure, refuge management, you know, you got road control, asset tracking. The, these are more things that need to be you know, not necessarily real time, but but need to have some connectivity sometime during <clears throat> the day to uh, to kind of pull that information back, right? Okay. And I think this may have a couple of uh, Susan. This may have a couple of slides to it. It may like a thing you want to note to the next one. You so so you kind of see all applications really involve remote access. All applications require a communications network. But no one technology will satisfy the requirements of these communication networks, meaning that you know there's a blend between fiber, copper, uh, maybe cell modems, they're wireless, right? There's not one that takes care of it all. And then, and then within that, um, just like you've got fiber, copper, you know, you've got multiple technologies within that. You also have the same thing within the wireless, right? There may be different frequencies. It may be 900, it may be 365, it may be 5 gig, it may be licensed. Right. It may be narrow band versus it may be broadband. So and that's what's really nice about uh, Cambium is we, we have a, a very vast uh, product portfolio that allows um, allows you to pick a technology that fits that application rather than saying, hey, I've got five gig and that's all I have. And I've got to make it work everywhere. We, we don't we, we, we allow you to pick and choose what applications you're trying to pull across. And then what environment gives you, <clears throat> and then you make that you make that connection. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> Excuse me. So as you can see, um, yeah, there's a couple of them here. But as you can see, the mission critical, right? So really, the communications network and the considerations you need to really look at, you know, because these are really mission critical type applications. These are, you know, the failure of the network has to be, you know, there's critical consequences in in the loss of life or property. You know, the networks are engineered to deliver defined capacity and availability reliability. If you mean that this is an always on, right? There's, there's, there's fiber. There may be a fiber connection. There may be, you know, a redundant wireless connection. There may be, you know, if you can't get fiber out there, there may be a multiple set there, maybe a cellular connection backed up to a wireless network, right? So there's, there needs to be always a redundant link out there. Uh, and also a dedicated network, meaning that, you know, in some cases, a lease line or cell modem backup. Um, or, or cell modem connectivity, you're not always going to have that dedicated, you know, 25 to 50 meg that you need for that type of, of connection. And you have that when you when you deploy these type of networks, <clears throat> excuse me, you have to have that type of connectivity. Um, also, the spectrum is protected, meaning that we're looking at probably licensed gig, uh, license, excuse me, licensed microwave for this uh, for this connection. 
also the information assurance is it's not optional, right? It needs to be on time, accurate, and and at 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 your uh, disposal. Uh, and there's also a, a business case is just purely for economic, right? You just have to have it out there to save, just to really show that um, your town that you've got this information here and that um, it's real time and, and on time. Okay, and so it's really a purpose built network. Okay, next slide. And then this is more of a, a, a business beneficial, right? This is just like, kind of like, uh, you know, kind of an add on. This is like a nice to haves. So you can kind of see the data is not time sensitive. It's sort of a best effort. Uh, the networks are kind of architected for coverage first and then connectivity second, right? And you can share this network uh, and it's more contingency managed, right? It's just kind of share the network. You know, whoever kind of needs that will kind of pull that bandwidth and then kind of get that and then and we'll have the connectivity. And then next you'll kind of worry about, you know, who, who can have that next, right? It's kind of a contention based. Um, and then also the spectrum is typically unlicensed, uh, meaning that it's just kind of best effort. Uh, and then also the, uh, the business case is just largely economic um, for that as well. So this is more of a shared services in this total cost of ownership, meaning that you can pull from multiple agencies uh, within that to help pay for this, pay for this network uh, and, and actually to help subsidize this network as well. Okay, next slide. Uh, yeah, there you go. And so um, for this, we kind of showed this is more of a transport and the main roads department. This is an IoT for the for uh, for uh, intelligent uh, traffic system. Uh, but we did flood management. We also showed some signage control, right? We also had uh, out here was the ITS field processor communications for traffic monitoring and application. Uh, we also did some CCTV and then flood monitoring and reporting. You kind of see all the different. These are all different technologies, right? So we had 450i. Uh, this is our point to multi-point in our fixed uh, wideband frequency, uh, both three gig and five gig. And then we also had our C and reach, which is our narrow band, uh, 900 megahertz, right? Because we knew that the, 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 the three and five gig would not work for the distances we were trying to uh, pull that information back for the uh, flood management as well as the uh, flood monitoring and reporting uh, in, in the small amounts of data. You don't really need, you, you're looking at a couple of kilobytes, right? Um, for that information, but you've got to go long distances, and it's really it's kind of overkill for the broadband uh, side. So we were able to use the narrow band and again as part of our product portfolio. We're able to mix and match different technologies, different frequencies, so that you're not relying on one, you know, one technology or one frequency to pull back all your information. Okay, next slide. So it, with, with our product portfolio, <clears throat> excuse me, we really talk about, you know, a wireless fabric. And, and we talk about that meaning that, you know, from your core down to your access layer, we really provide this wireless blanket, this wireless fabric across your whole network. And, and we, we, we have products in each one of those categories that provide you a very robust, very reliable, very economical connection to uh to your access layer or body back to your core right so we have our long range point to point you know our licensed uh microwave whether that is uh, licensed or unlicensed for the backhaul okay we also have point to multi-point and then we have that in three three gig we have that in 4.9 for public safety we also have that 2.4 and 5 gig unlicensed right again multiple frequencies into call into multiple applications in multiple environments right each one has their really their own benefit uh inside of that and then we also have enterprise wi-fi right that's that edge at edge access whether that's indoor and outdoor and then we also have industrial iot narrow band that's that skater that's that licensed and also unlicensed um point to point or point to multi-point narrow band type of connectivity and what, what really makes us sets us apart from all of our competitors out there is our end-to-end -end cloud management, which we call CN Maestro. And you're able to manage your network, not all the way from the core, but all the way to the edge um, under one single pane of glass. And that is very key. Uh, and and that, that is a huge um, competitive differential for, for Cambium in, in that regard, okay? Next slide. So what, what are some of the key 
uh, tenets of the solution, right? You know, easy rapid deployment. So wireless is really the primary network to avoid heavy construction or cable installation. Wireless is a, as a backup, right? There is a, there's already fiber or other wired infrastructure in place. And there's solar power for low power devices. So, you know, the one thing about wireless is, is where, you know, fiber or copper is, is, you know, not, it's not cost effective to deploy and you need to have connectivity at those areas. Wireless is certainly, you know, the, the, the choice there, the low total cost of ownership, uh, ease of deployment, reliability, uh, and, and just that, again, it's that, uh, and you're also, it's a dedicated network as well, right? Uh, secure access and communications, meaning you've got secure authentication options for onboarding users and devices, meaning that, you know, it's secure, right? We have AES-256 encryption on, on our on our network, right? So that allows, you know, military-grade type of, of uh, encryption on, on those networks. So it's secure. End-to-end uh, -end encryption for all traffic. Again, role-based administration um, for, for your users uh, and, comp and, and components on the network, meaning that, you know, we have that not only is the data secure, but also getting onto the network is also secure as well. So someone just can't come in and start changing the network uh, that they're just a user, right? Rather than that administrator can then manage that whole network and he can make those changes. And again, reliable mission critical network. You got to make sure it's highly available network for backup options, ruggedized to work in tough environments. Uh, also tamper proof because these deployments may be out in the middle of, you know, these very rural areas and, and you want to make sure that nobody can tamper with those devices uh, and get into those devices. That's that middleman attack or basically just physically getting into the device and tearing it up as well. Uh, and also headroom to handle, you know, unpredictable peak demand, meaning that, you know, now as you start to build out and we know these highways, you know, is there, there's, it's, it's always like a 10 to 15 year, you know, they're, they're always building onto that particular stretch of road. And, and right now they may call for 10 to 20 megabits, but you've got to make sure that network can expand from, you know, 20 megabits to 50 to 100 megabits, especially if you own that network. Whereas if you had, uh, you know, a, a lease line or a cell modem out there, it certainly cannot not uh, esc or expand at that rate. Or if, it, if you do have to do that, then you've got to rip and replace. And then it becomes very, very expensive um, um, to do that. So... Next slide. So here's really just some of the components of, of, of a smart highway and, and kind of the solution components in here. But if you can kind of see through here, but you've got number one kind of in the middle down there, you've got Wi-Fi coverage with, you know, high speed roaming. So whether that's on a train, right, or whether that's actually on the on the road there, uh, you've got Wi-Fi access. Um, it could be streaming along the interstate or, or you know, major thoroughfare through a city. Uh, but you have that capability of having Wi-Fi available. Uh, and then how you would do that was like with number two, you've got both point-to-point -point and point-to-multi-point -point wireless and, and, and backhaul distribution, right? So you have point-to-point -to, -point to multiple locations uh, like we do with South Carolina and the DOT. Uh, they have fiber to most of their, you know, thoroughfares, you know, in the state, but they don't terminate at every intersection because at every intersection, you've got that large silver, uh, box there that that where the bucket inside of that is anywhere from fifty to one hundred thousand dollars worth of equipment um, that goes in there. What they're able to do uh, is to take our wireless uh, wireless point to point and go multiple hops down, you know, both you know from all on in all directions and cover multiple intersections and pull that back so that they can pull back that that basically it's just the switching. Uh, information back from uh, the intersection so that they can then manage the traffic lights. Uh, and then from there, they can drop, they have enough throughput or bandwidth on those uh, at those intersections where they can then drop video in there just to see traffic. It's not to manage, it's not a, it's not traffic light signaling. It's not a, t it's not a ticket, um, you know, uh, red light ticket um, applications. This is to manage the traffic uh, to see, you know, how long the lights stay red or yellow or green, whatever it may be. And then where does it back up and what time so they can manage that flow much easier, right? And they can have those times. So then it saves them the cost of having these large uh, boxes, uh, these fiber termination boxes at each at each intersection. Again, if something happens as far as a, a, 
uh, a wreck at that intersection and takes out one of those boxes, again, that's a hundred thousand dollars or so that they have they don't have to worry about, right? They've got a, a you know a couple of thousand dollar radio up on a tower up on the off the street light pointing back to another one and they're pulling all that information back. So it really it saves them a lot of money again and it gives them real time instant access back to their network. Okay. Uh, again, the number three, as you can see, there's microwave backhaul links really for redundancy. So you've got certainly got fiber running up and down the, the interstate, but they still can have fiber backup, uh, excuse me, wireless uh, backup to those uh, links um, just to make sure. We did that also for several DOTs during construction where their main fiber feeds were run up and down the interstate and they were changing a couple of uh, intersections, uh, excuse me, a couple of uh, interchanges where it was like a two major highways would come together. They're changing the whole the scheme of that. Um, they put up uh, fiber links, uh, uh, excuse me, license links across the uh, across the uh, the work area there because they knew at some point that fiber would be terminated, right? It just just during construction. So they actually had three uh, licensed links uh, up and uh, pulling back all of that data, all that video. Um, back to their uh, head in. Uh, this was all the video coming from all the interstates in the state of both South Carolina, uh, North Carolina, and then we also did some in, that in Alabama, so multiple states. But and they're all doing that. They, and they, they take these license links and then move them to other construction areas wherever they see fit to, to make sure that their video and their, 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 their network just stays up. Okay. And then as they build that back out, they'll put the fiber back in and then they'll just uh, move that along. So to other areas and they're also having see a number four right where you've got some narrow band you just got some sensors uh that are along the building along the roadway where it could be road temperatures right as you get more up into the mountains they want to know what's the temperature of the road right do i need to go ahead and and issue uh some warnings for those roads do i need to go ahead and get the salt trucks ready for those roads right because you know down here in the south it's it's not you know it, snow and, and, and nice is not always you know it's, it's not a it's not a constant thing but when it happens you know as southerners we don't know how to drive very well in in the uh in the snow and ice so we we need we need to make sure that we get the trucks out there to kind of help us and and uh, get those roadways clear but um so that those sensors then can pull that information back they also want to know vibration and, and what type of you know uh how much wear and tear is on those those roads those sensors are being pulled back uh, that information is being pulled back as well. So there's a lot of information coming back from the roadways. Uh, also, the trucks, you know, they can pass through and they want to know. They also have uh, radiation detection. Uh, those trucks that travel up and down the road, they want to make sure there's nothing leaking or anything like that. There's, those sensors are all located along the, uh, the, the, the thoroughfare and they're pulling that information back, but it's small amounts of data. So there's no reason to have really a broadband connection to that. You can have a narrow band uh, connection. Also, you want to make sure it's IP67 rated on a pole right through Ethernet. You got also have a, a PoE switch and aggregation, meaning that um, you can have that um, for solar power, right? And then also power another device. It may be a camera that you want to have there, and you can pull that back. The six, as you can see, number six is video surveillance. Again, for tracking information, just for being a proactive rather than a reactive type situation for, for your highways. Uh, whether that is for traffic management or for some type of, you know, Amber Alert out there, and you can kind of then track and see where that uh, license tag or whatever that may be. So, uh, again, air quality sensors on number seven, as you can see here, so you kind of see just a lot of different information sitting along the roadways that we see out there, whether it's air quality, speed sensors, road sensors, right? That's all being connected by a narrow band backhaul solution. Again, solar panels in some areas where you may need a power option. And then uh, connected digital signage, right, on number nine. Just kind of gives you the information as far as traffic ahead, road conditions ahead. Uh, again, they're pulling information travel times ahead. That's where a lot of that information comes from is those video surveillance. You know, if you get go through Atlanta, you can kind of see with the travel time. Um, they're just measuring the traffic, right? But that's all being pulled back by video uh, and, and sensors in the road to know what what the tra how the traffic flow is going <clears throat> okay next slide so we'll kind of just tap in to see here we kind of some of the experiences on smart highways but we did some uh, wi-fi uh, outdoor access points provided by 
uh, pervasive Wi-Fi coverage for the journey, right? So a little rest area, and we provided some Wi-Fi, but it was Wi-Fi access points along the highway, uh, kind of delivered a little gap-free, you know, network coverage. Fast roaming allows the Wi-Fi capable devices in the cars to be always on. Um, you know, that, that that is is more of a we don't see that as much certainly along the, the you know, continuous Wi-Fi coverage. We kind of see that more like maybe at a rest area, maybe the truck stop, something like that. Because you know, going up and down the interstate and providing Wi-Fi, that's 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 a lot of a lot of Wi-Fi APs and a lot of bandwidth, right? So you know, with the cell phones and everything else today, it's that's you don't see that as much, but you certainly will see that at rest areas, truck stops, uh, maybe at, at, a, at an accident reporting area, you may see some Wi-Fi just so they can get. Uh, some some coverage there uh, to either call the, the highway patrol or whatever it may be, and then also um, some of the new experiences, right? Cashless transactions on the go, automated toll payments, right? Location-based services that enable local business to engage travelers, meaning that you know as as a traveler travels maybe through an exit, um, they can then send out some information to those travelers, say, hey, look, next exit ahead, you know, such such restaurant or gas station or whatever it may be, um, and they can try to pull those travelers into those those areas right so it's kind of like a pro pro marketing uh activity which is uh which is really nice okay next slide and then as you can see here where we have and i've discussed this with the microwave link also with the point to point and point to multi-point it's just the it's just the access layer right how are you getting that how are you getting that access or that connectivity down to that device uh, it could be a licensed uh, microwave link it could be a point-to-point -point link whether that's a license or unlicensed and also point to multi-point um, and, and what's nice with cambium is we have all of those whether that's 611 18 23 gig 32 uh, or or even the unlicensed frequencies as well but we have a radio and a frequency um, that will fit the application fit the environment uh, so that you're not trying to to really say trying to put a put a square peg in a, in a round hole, right? So uh, it's not a one size certainly not a one size fits all. And I'm not saying that you know it only needs to be fiber, it only needs to be wireless because they both play very well and they complement each other uh, um, in this environment. Okay, next slide. Uh, and then so again, it's enhanced public safety, right? Video surveillance, video analytics, right? Digital signage warnings and forensics right so it just gives you a lot of information again as I, as I mentioned before you know, you really become proactive rather than a reactive uh, you know if an accident happens you know you can immediately get that those start to to, to change that flow of that traffic because on video you're going to see that accident happen you're going to know where it's at and then you can then uh, move that traffic and change that flow so that the the driver then has a, a, a nice experience right they're not stuck in traffic and all of a sudden now it's you know, it's, it's a it's a five, six, ten mile backup, right? Because you didn't change it and it didn't have the information until it was certainly way too late. Uh, but again, reduce highway crime, right? Improve national security. So you've got video surveillance and you have uh, tracking of the license plates or suspicious vehicles. Again, emergency emergency communication uh, while they're on the interstate, uh, they can also then respond back to uh, during either if, if the wired or the uh, signal networks are down. You also have digital signage with that uh, reduce the accidents, right? So again, you've got early warnings to road hazards, whether that's flooding, potholes, road crossings, and you're going to have all the information uh, that feeds <clears throat> back back to you that you can then put on that digital signage, right? Whether that's some of the sensors that you have in the road, and then can then be then blasted up onto the onto the digital signage. Again, driving above the speed limit, so you can kind of just make people aware, and I. I you know, I'm one of those that drive a little fast, so I, I get those alerts sometimes as I'm driving through. Um, but that, that kind of flashes is, hey, you know, you're a couple of miles over the speed limit. You know, you need to slow it down. There's, you know, whatever, and it just kind of keeps that flow of the traffic uh, and keeps everyone safe, right? <clears throat> also, poor visibility. So you've got warnings that you can put out there, whether it's a stalled vehicle or slow traffic ahead. Uh, poor visibility, maybe it's in getting the mountains with the fog and whatnot. So again, it just makes it a, a, a much safer, uh, more enjoyable experience as you travel uh, down down the interstate. And then also supporting the infrastructure, right? You've got ruggedized PoE switches for power to cameras, wired connectivity. You've got solar panels for power backup. Um, again, a lot of 
a lot of devices that uh, connect to this that that Cambium provides, but also that you can kind of see there's a lot of there's a lot of a lot of devices that uh, connect to the network that then go into making your experience um, you know enjoyable, right? And it's not just sensors, it's not just narrow band, it's not just hey, I'm putting up a speed sign, a speed limit sign, and you know we'll kind of worry about the state troopers to manage it. There's a lot of technology now that's out there on the interstate, and and so what that moving from away from narrow band or kilobits of data, they're now moving to megabytes, right? They're moving to broadband, meaning that, you know, 10, 15, 20, 100 meg, you know, even in some cases 200 meg to get all that video back all along the interstate where you've got, in, you know, the, in the video cameras along the interstate uh, and you can see those poles that are out there. They're, they're not, they're, you know, fiber is certainly running all along the interstate, but they don't connect everyone up to fiber. There is there is wireless backhaul. It's just it's just more cost effective to have wireless connectivity from that video cameras back to a certain point. And you typically can go, uh, you know, anywhere from five hops, six hops out from a from a fiber termination point, both both you know north and south, whatever it may be, east and west, whatever it is. But you know one, you know each way, <clears throat> excuse me, down the inter interstate, um, and and have you know five to six hops each way and save a lot of that fiber termination cost, right? And it, that, let that let that wireless link, it's just, you know, provide a little bit of power. If you don't have power there off of that, typically you'll see that by an overpass or out by a bridge, it can easily get um, power to that pole there. But if they're not, then you can have a solar powered um, camera there with, with the wireless backhaul and then point that back and, and it gets connectivity back to the network and they've got real time coverage. Okay, so next slide. And also, it, it, again, we've talked about really the, the, the sensor side of it, but you've got digital signage, you've got air quality sensors, you've got road sensors. Uh, again, that's really small, small amounts of data, uh, a few kilobits, but, you know, and it's intermittent. It's not a continuous, <clears throat> excuse me, continuous coverage. But, you you know, you've got narrow band radios, which are really long range, high resilient communication, uh, meaning that, you know, with these radios or 900, you know, you know, it could be 220 all the way 4, 450 to 700, 900 frequency. Um, and these frequencies go a long distance. Have, you know, the bandwidth is certainly not, not there. You know, it's not, it's not broadband, but that's okay because we're only transmitting kilobits. But this allows you to have a radio, you know, every few 10, 10 miles or so, and then you get that information back. Or you have, have, you know, it could be less, but it could be more in some cases. But again, you're pulling that information back and it's just small amounts of data and it's intermittent. It's not a continuous, it's just pings every so often pulling that information and pulling that information back. Okay, next slide. So if, if you look at kind of Cambium and, and again, it's like I said, it's not a one size, you know, it doesn't fit all, right? You, you've got to have some Wi-Fi in there. You have to have, um, you know, you may have to have the licensed backhaul. You, you may have unlicensed backhaul. You may have you know, unlicensed to access layer. So there's many different frequencies that are going to be used because there's many different environments that are out there. You may need something that, that penetrates through foliage or through trees. Um, whereas, you know, in some cases you've got open, open air, then you can just, uh, or greenfield, you can have, uh, you know, you just use the five gig or if you need to do even higher from say mountaintop to mountaintop to get across a couple of valleys, um, then you can do license, right? So there's, there's a lot of different, uh, Whatever the environment gives you, it is really is is your the Cambium has a product that can take advantage of that and provide you the throughput that you need for your application. Um, so again, I kind of touched on that, but again, ruggedized pole mounts, um, switches, connectivity to power to the pole, solar powered. You know, you've got parallel microwave links that are based to provide redundancy for wired backbone. Uh, again, you've got redundant links there, enables fast provisioning in regions where it's difficult to deploy wired infrastructure. Again, so you can kind of reach that, right? So there's a certain point where fiber gets you to a certain point, and then from there, you've got to look at some type of, of wireless type of connectivity, and, and Cambium has those products that, that can um, get you that reliability, cost-effective, much lower to total cost of ownership, and, and also um, very spectral efficient, some of those spectral efficient radios in the marketplace. Okay, next slide. So I touched on this earlier, but as you kind of see with, with our cloud management, this is called our CN Maestro. And 
we, we do all of this under a single pane of glass and this makes this very easy. And, and what this allows us to, the, the network managers of, of, you know, of the DOTs to, you know, look on one screen and they kind of see, you know, what, where their network, make sure their network is up, what devices are connected to it, you know, what issues they may be having with those devices and what's connected and what's not. They can see all of that un, under a single pane, right? They can see their whole network and it, it makes it where they can have, you know, they can also do provisioning, easy onboarding. All it's, it's also zero touch onboarding, so they can send in, send a a, uh, a a maintenance crew out to their um, to the work area. Right? They've got their their radio that's already provisioned. They connect it into the into the network. It connects up to the to the to the wireless backhaul, and it's it's immediately provisioned. Right. You don't have to worry about someone going out and trying to provision that radio. It's so you've already set that provisioning. And once that radio connects into the network, it's then provisioned uh, by the parameters that you've already set. Right. And so you can do a lot of that um, also from from the on screen there, uh, as well as some a lot of the flexible uh, monitoring with hierarchical dashboard statistics. Right. Alarms. You also do some forensics and troubleshooting off of this. So it's. Um, Again, it gives you a lot of information as far as the data reporting APIs, Wi-Fi, you know, get, allows guest access. So at these rest areas, as well as these truck stop areas, you can manage that guest access to have just a small portion of your network, allow that to be the Wi-Fi that they, they, um, that they get onto, right? So again, that's all managed through, through the CN Maestro. That can either be a cloud-based management or on-premise. We have both of those, um, we have both those. We have a, a free feature. We have a free version of that as well as a paid version that gives you a few more, you know, quite a bit more features. Um, but for the most part, the, the free version certainly works very well for, in most cases um, for, for, the, uh, for the customer. Okay, next slide. And you can kind of see this is our product set that we've kind of used for um, really for the solutions for the smart highways, right? We have our 820 line, which is our uh, point to point backhaul solutions. Uh, we have this both in a single radio, dual radio, indoor, outdoor, split mount. Again, multiple types of configurations depending on what your environment calls for, right? And then our 450 platform, this is our, happens to be our 450M, uh, which is our Medusa product. This is our MoMIMO, which gives just incredible amounts of throughput. You know, in a 20 megahertz channel and a 5 gig, you're looking somewhere around, uh, you know, 500 meg and a 40 megahertz channel somewhere close to a gig. But it's just a incredible technology and breakthrough uh, in that radio where it's a it's a it's a seven by seven, uh, excuse me, 14 by 14 uh, MUMIMO, which is seven talks to speaks to seven sectors, seven um, subscribers at a time. Uh, again, it's just incredible technology that's in that radio. But that that's our really our top of the line. We also have entry level, which is, you know, our, our EPMP, then our 450i line, and then our 450m line. So again, we have multiple products, um, depending on multiple budgets, uh, applications, whatever that calls for, we have a product for that where you're not trying to put, you know, one product across multiple types of uh, environments. Our CN pilot, which is our Wi-Fi, both enterprise and service provider model, we have both indoor, outdoor. Um, for that, and then our CN Reach, which is our narrow band um, radios as well. You can kind of see we have 700, uh, 900, 450, 220 uh, in, in that. So again, narrow band radios. Again, it depends on the application, right? So this is kind of like the product set that we kind of use for the smart highways, the digital signage, the video surveillance, the backhaul, whatever that may be. Okay, next slide. Uh, and so really what are our advantages, right? So again, Indian connectivity at a fraction of the cost of fiber, you know, really mission critical Wi-Fi for indoor, outdoor, high density deployments, guest access with the CN pilot. Um, get kind of, it's also zero touch configuration for our, for our radios um, and, and with our EPMP and our uh, CN pilot products. Uh, our, our CN Maestro cloud management for easy deployment, management, monitoring of the network. Uh, really di no disruptive economics, meaning we have no AP license fees, free management, free software updates, free support. Um, it, it, that's really key is that, that total cost of ownership. And we really have, again, best in class total cost of ownership. So not only is our, you know, our, our initial cost of ownership typically lower than a lot of our competitors, 
so is our total cost of ownership uh, because we're not trying to we have multiple products that can fit into multiple applications to where it saves you the money because you've got the right product for the right application in the right environment okay and and you're not trying to say fit a broadband radio five gig into a sensor data type application where you've got to have you know if you had two c and reach radios you can make that 10 mile connection but if you're trying to fit a a five gig or a wi-fi into that you're going to have to have you know maybe 10 or 15 radios and then have them hop back and you may have to have some connections in there to get that data off that wi-fi off that off that wireless network again it gets more it's it's, it's much more much more expensive if you don't have the right product so again we have those products we have that certainly that expertise we've been in the business for for you know doing wireless for many many years um and and many customers to show for that not only in the u.s but around the world uh and and have the expertise not only in our sales department but our technical department um is where we have engineers not only you know in the field but also engineers that you and our, and our call center there's just uh, really second to none uh, as far as the the support and the engineers that uh, are available and at, at at your disposal okay next slide and I think that may be uh, that may be it yep so really that's just the road to smart highways right I know I kind of kind of I only had really had an hour but uh, I certainly tried to hit the, the high points um, in that and then uh, Susan I don't know if I see the questions or not but if there's any questions I'd be more than happy to to to, uh, to answer those or, or at least try to answer them. Yeah, uh, we have, so someone asked uh, if you could repeat your name and your role. Yeah, so my name is Yancey Johnson and I am the Southeast uh, Regional Sales Manager. So I go out as far as uh, Arkansas, uh, Louisiana, back up to West Virginia, Kentucky, Virginia, and then Virginia and then down to Florida. Okay. And then uh, someone asked if these slides will be available for download. Uh, I guess they will. The slides and the recording will be posted to our community platform. Uh, that'll be available on cambiumnetworks.com. You can go to the community and you will find uh, this recording and the slides. And it will also be posted on YouTube as well. Uh, there are no other questions, but we can wait a minute or two to see if any okay. more come in. Okay. No, I guess I covered it pretty well. I, I don't think that's the case, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait. Uh, someone said, I would like to know the coverage range for the PMP radio. Well, okay. So, so that really, de it depends, right? It depends on your environment. Um, it could be from, you know, 10 feet to, we have some that are 15 miles. So it depends on, and, and it could be more, right? So what it's also really nice about the, our point to point radios is our subscribers um, we have both integrated uh, antenna. We also have connectorized. Okay, so with that, it depends on you can you can have a connectorized subscriber module that could have a six foot dish, right? If if you wanted that, right? It, it, go ahead, or you could have it with a, a two foot dish. So it, it, that range varies. Uh, it also depends on the frequency. It could be you know 900 will certainly get more penetrate more in the non line of sight type of environment, but the five gig will certainly go much farther and give you give give you higher throughput. So it all depends on your environment and, and how much throughput that you're uh, that you need for your application. Okay, I, thanks. You know, if you look at our tech, I think they say like 40 miles is our is our connectivity. Uh, that's our range on our point to point. I think it's 40 miles, and then our point to point unlicensed is around 125 miles. And we do have the longest shot in Guinness Book with uh, our point to point 670. Uh, it's 153 miles. We're providing 40 megabits. Uh, I think each end has a four foot dish um, on that. And we're actually sp pulling a, a video and voice across that link. At it's 40 megs. So it's pretty, pretty cool. 
Thanks, Yancy. Uh, uh -huh. We have another question about the alert system for cloud management. Okay. Uh, they um, just said, is it working? Is it is it working? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I'm not sure exactly what uh, what type of alerting, but yes, we do have alerts. Whether that's um, you get those alerts uh, by you know email, text, um, or or actually up on on screen, we have all of that. Yes, that you, you can get that by several several different ways. We also have the API so that if you've got a, a, a platform that you already have in existence. Um, we can build the hooks into that of the APIs, and you can manage that into your own management platform that, that you already have. So it, it's very customizable e either way. But yes, the alerts do, we do have the alerts both, you know, inside the CN Maestro or if it's a, uh, email, text, phone call, whatever it may be. Okay. And if they, if they have any questions, is they can contact support or go on the community, right? Yeah, uh, for the CN Maestro, yes. And, and if they need, if they're having a specific issue, um, I don't know if I've got my contact information out there, but they, they can reach 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 one of our engineers. Um, if you're located in the set, wherever you may be, what just look on our website and, and find your your uh, regional technical manager, or your regional sales manager, and we'll get you it will get you in touch with the right person. If you're having a specific issue or you need a specific, uh, if you've got a specific, specific request. Okay, I think that covers the questions. Perfect. Okay, well, thank you everyone for attending today and thank you, Yancy, for presenting and uh, sharing the road to smart highways with us. Thank you so much. <laughs> and thank you again all for, for attending. And if you have any questions, please, Feel free to reach out to your local uh, Cambium rep, and and we'll make sure that we uh, we get you taken care of and get you in touch with the right person. Okay, thanks, Yancy. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye.